Hello, and welcome to this CUBE conversation here in our Palo Alto studios of the CUBE. I'm John Furrier, your host of the CUBE. We got a great conversation with Jake Oyl, who's CEO of Sumopti, and he's really got a great company that he's leading, a uh, growing company around the semiconductor industry where it's complex and there's multiple supply chain variables always going on. Everyone wants more chips. NVIDIA Blackwell's coming out, people want it. There's a lot of market on GPUs and CPUs. These chips are going into devices that's impacting our lives. And so the financial planning and the dynamics around this supply in the industry is huge. Who gets what allotments, what goes shipped into what, it impacts everyone's bottom line. Of course, it's the service that people get in their phones, their devices, and the, the systems power in this next gen AIJ. Welcome to theCUBE, thanks for coming on. Thank you, John. So the Cube, Silicon Angle, and of course the Cube Research, we're deep, we've been covering semiconductors over a decade. We saw the rise of ARM. We're seeing what's going on now with, with NVIDIA, with clustered systems, now almost a year coming up in a couple of months on when GTC comes back out again, where I call it the year of clustered systems. Jensen Wong's like, hey, you know what? A whole democratization of supercomputing's coming. And so we've been tracking a couple categories. Um, fab companies like Samsung on Semiconductor, you obviously vertically integrated, so fab companies are out there. Fabless, NVIDIA, AMD, and Qualcomm's of the world. And of course, these AI systems or any systems that's going to have these chips in them for the enterprises who are buying them. And they're buying from Broadcom and Marvel. And so we're tracking all that. And, and so the semiconductor area is super hot. Define what pl planning means and this allotment concept, because this is kind of where the action is, who gets what. And I want to get into that because I think it's super valuable to understand where the trends connect with what's coming out. Everyone on Wall Street wants to know who's getting what, what's the stock prices, there's a lot going on around data. Um, so let's dig into it. But first, take a minute to explain what you guys do uh, in your company, because I think this is important because there's a lot of planning that really could have a huge impact. Take a minute to explain what you guys do and then, then define this planning um, and allotment concept. So Samopti has done optimization analytics for leading AI companies. Uh, NVIDIA happens to be a customer of ours for the last 10 years, since 2013. And we have packaged our technology into what we call as a decision support system for semiconductor planning. For example, I mean, we can, our system can model financial impact of multiple constraints uh, to a tech node supply. So coming back to the defining of the semiconductor problem, John, it's basically, uh, if I net it out, it's like providing a demand statement yeah. for the supply teams. Uh, and it's a cross-functional thing. Uh, we are talking about starting with two forecasts. Uh, you have the business units, uh, you know, looking at market share and TAM and coming up yeah. with what is referred to as tops down forecasts that you know. Yeah. And then you have the sales teams, you know, working with customers and regions and coming up with the bottoms up forecast. When we talk about supply in semiconductor, just want to be clear, it's really three things. There's the node or the wafer supply. There is supply at the die family that we talk about. Mm -hmm. And then there's the finished goods and parts. And there's lots of complex interactions between different variables. And what are those? We have demand targets, we have revenue, we have margin, contractual obligations, customer agreements, we have yields, uh, you have capacity and material constraints, you have interdependencies, uncertainties and risk. So there's a lot going on here. The, uh, the, the thing that I see a lot of is that you brought up all these planning variables because I know for a fact when I talk to folks who are trying to get these chips and these devices, in, in their devices, there's just huge demand. And so people are throwing the dart at the board. Hey, sales are going to be what? So sales, obviously this bottoms up from sales is huge. Top down is, hey, we have a relationship with NVIDIA or so-and-so. So we get the first batch or, <laughs> or, I mean, this is, I mean, there is a real problem around matching the, the product to the demand cycle. And then who buys in volume gets maybe more treat, I mean, who's more strategic, what the prices are. I mean, this is why I think it's an interesting conversation because that's hard. Yeah, rightly pointed out. And without getting into confidentiality, let me point out, it's not just NVIDIA and NVIDIA's friends or the ecosystem that NVIDIA is pulling along with. It's actually affecting companies that are not in that, more so, because everything is connected. And we started to hear about this, John, in Q1, I want to say Q1 of 2023. We've been doing this for a while, about 10 years, but Q1 of 2023, this, it really notched up. Yeah. And uh, we are hearing this, 
wafer is not being fully utilized. Note supply is being left on the table. Current alternatives are not solving this problem. Define node supply real quick, so folks might not know what that means. Yeah, so basically, you know, you might have heard of uh, technology nodes as in like four nanometers. Mm -hmm. Dif different geometries of the silicon uh, are cut into wafers. And that's basically a, a kind of a fixed, fixed count mm -hmm. or fixed amount. And that's all it is. Then those wafers get cut into dyes, as you know, and yeah, then those yeah. dyes get packaged into finished products. Okay, so a little good jargon there, good definition. I want to get that out there. Okay, so the three problems are, one is what? Well, so the three, three you, you see three problems. What are those three problems? Yeah, thank you. So one is current alternatives cannot handle it. This problem of semiconductor planning with complex variables and many different variables. And when you say alternatives, you mean like doing it yourself or using a service? Yeah. What, what do you mean? Whatever could be the current system. Uh, could be Excel. <laughs> spreadsheets. Uh, could Spreadsheet be spreadsheets. Help. Yeah, spreadsheets is pretty much it. Or whatever they have in front of them. Uh, second problem is labor shortage. For having practitioners who can actually do it. See, it's come down to labor, right? It doesn't, it's not, you know, you can use this system or yeah. that system. At the end of the day, it's the person behind yeah. it. We saw that with TSMC in Arizona. I mean, labor shortage and skills are two of the biggest things in the, in the industry. What kind of training is needed? Um, and to understand these modelings, and also like the nuances of the industry, because to do the modeling, you have to have knowledge yeah. of the industry, yeah. knowledge of the tech, knowledge of the nodes and all the components. Yeah. What are some of the skills needed? Um, what is bridging the gap? How can companies attract the right talent to solve these critical problems? Yeah, it's a good question, John. So let me take a, a step back to actually explain the complexity of this problem, and then we'll get to why there's a labor shortage. So, semiconductor planning can be described as a goal problem. Uh, Excel, as you said, you were asking me, yeah. cannot handle it because it's a multi-dimensional problem. So we, if you look at just the science behind it, or the math behind it, we have two approaches to solve it. There is the, what is referred to as the goal satisfaction approach, mm -hmm. where it provides a, a way to reach the goal with constraint satisfaction. Other one is the optimization approach, mm -hmm. which provides you with an optimal path to the goal, and there you're looking at objective function and constraint satisfaction or constraint optimization. Now, if you were to ask me, what is a harder problem? And I'm talking about some really hard problems in computer science. Uh, it turns out the answer is satisfaction or optimization both sit in the same complexity class. Now, back to your, your labor shortage question. Uh, Time series is a kind of a niche. And there aren't too many expert practitioners mm -hmm. as compared to other areas of data science. So let's make sure we are first clear yeah. on that. So time series, I would describe it to be more like an experiment intensive art. Mm -hmm. uh, where you, there is not one magic bullet or one way of doing it. You kind of have very small, small tricks that you've learned over a period of time. And then it's practice, it's just like playing a, you know, piano or a violin or a cello. So there's no magic bullet. So current practice, so I can get to your labor shortage question, current practice as your homegrown, you know, whatever you yeah. want it, stuff, yeah. uh, that doesn't cut it. Now I'm not talking about semiconductor companies or high tech companies. I'm talking about the big four, the cloud. Companies who are attracting this huge AI talent, they have their own internal people. They have semi-professionals without naming any company, semi-professionals who use general purpose models, some rudimentary out-of-box libraries, come up with some ridiculous model, put out some output, adjust it a little bit, work on it for two weeks a year, and then move on to the next department. No one uses it, let alone checking if there was any revenue or margin left on the table. Yeah. And out-of-box, is not blaming these people. Out of box, ultimately, John, is black box. Yeah. And so if you, regardless of the labor shortage problem, you're dealing with a black box, it's difficult to understand, even for somebody who went through some classes, yeah. uh, what made the model go wrong? Yeah. Or retrospectively investigating what could be improved. So there is a performance ceiling yeah. with all of this. You know, I've seen this in the database industry. You know, SQL is supposed to be a great way to get data insights, and that creates stovepipes. 
and silos. Um, and then you just, people would use it and it would be okay, not, sometimes not affected, mostly inadequate. But then SaaS apps came out to make, sure, make that better and more robust because there's more data to get. I see the same thing kind of going on here. How did you react to that? Does that is that getting it right? Why would no, you? Absolutely, you're right on the money there, John. Absolutely, and we're going back 90s and so on, and you're absolutely right. With some opti, you know, we can outperform these given specialization in the time series domain. We do it, this is back to SaaS offering, yeah. we do it 3x to 5x quicker at half the cost of these alternatives. And we do it, because as you just said SaaS, we have pre-built models for the semiconductor high tech domain, you know, yeah. just, just give you a reference. So not everybody, not everyone is an NVIDIA, not everyone is any one of these last who can pay a million dollars to a yeah. practitioner or a skilled scientist to come and do it from scratch. Yeah. And we have, we have world-class time series scientists who've been working on this problem for over a decade. Yeah. In 2017, 2017, we did first pilots with NVIDIA, for example. So our models, our grounds up code, there's no out of box yeah. going on, sophisticated data extraction, uh, non-standard training procedures, models configured per data set. Today, all the yeah. semiconductor companies I'm talking about, all the ones you mentioned, and the high-tech companies have substantial amounts of data. And you can discover laws and patterns today, which would be very helpful to them. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, it's it's a wide open I mean, frontier. I just Jay, I just interviewed a company, a startup in San Francisco, ex Amazonian, ex AWS folks, and what was interesting was is they have a product that does metering for usage based billing, and their number one customers are people switching from subscription to usage. My point is that they they found they're growing so fast because the internal teams that build these meter oh wait we we can do this we're gonna we don't want to outsource other, other companies software they it ends up becoming a black box in three years because people leave, domain specific experts move on to other jobs. So what they built internally becomes a black box, which you mentioned earlier in different contexts is no one likes a black box because then like, what is this? So I think you're starting to see trust with suppliers who actually are experts at something. And these guys are expert at metering for usage and they're killing it because they solve the problem because the, the do it yourself, build it or use a partner. Yeah, it looks like I can, I can do it on paper, but after a few years, it ends up coming in black box and because it's revenue specific. Yes, yes. It impacts revenue yes. usage because, yes. you know, some people don't even measure a usage on like their apps. Well, we have all these downloads and they go, well, no one's using it. So they're probably going to cancel, which helps them with their forecasting. Yeah. This is where I think is interesting. So, you know, I see the alternative piece there. I get the labor shortage and also labor leaving labor shortage and then labor migration. Like I was working on a project and move, I move over here. I'm a great cello player. I moved on to another band, right? Yeah. It's like, okay. So I see those two things. Now the third problem is, what's the third problem is planning, which I think this kind of ties into. So I want to get into that. How does yeah. the planning problem get solved? Yeah. So, so, so right up and we'll come back to the labor if you like after this, but on the planner, so CEO, COO, CFO, the VP, are not making these decisions. These billion dollar financial impact things that you're talking about, unfortunately, it's not at that level. Uh, someone calls a CEO, and I'm not naming any particular company, an escalation occurs, the rest of the team takes ad hoc supply and allocates it, allocation, to this one customer without looking at the impact on other customers and regions. Yeah. And there is a disconnect so where's the problem? There is a disconnect within internal departments. Planners make decisions, but the planner adoption of these models is low to non-existent today. Yeah. Referring to your black box earlier, that's connected here. What is happening is somebody came in, some internal team, they've stitched these systems together. Some person left the company, some other came out. The whole final product, that after all the plan has to use is complex and hard to use and planners don't care about math. Planners of course care about math though, but they care about user interaction model, speed and flexibility. So Samopti provides a full stack modeling platform. We understand yeah. models don't make decisions, but we have packaged our state of the art 
multidimensional model that I referred to earlier when you're talking about Excel into a decision support system that supplements your ERP and planning systems. Yeah. So Samopti provides planners today the ability to run multiple models swiftly. It's got a, uh, I would say, a state-of-the-art intuitive interface, no training required. Mm -hmm. The planner can specify all these things you're talking about, all these parameters, what are my business rules, what's my supply, uh, where, where are my constraints, all the dimensions, much the same way when you're running alternative queries, yeah. uh, interacting with a spreadsheet or a database. So with better multiple models, you get, I'm um, getting out of the tech talk now, I'm just yeah, regular. Yeah, yeah. Uh, with better, uh, faster models come more opportunities yeah. to consider rewards for various actions. More opportunities yeah. for judgment. Yeah. And your point about satisfaction, uh, customer, that escalation, oh yeah, and the impact of that is, could be have collateral damage to other downstream impacts. So this idea of balancing customer satisfaction and profit maximization come into play. I mean, this is complicated, I call it spreadsheet, like but you have a platform, you guys have done this. So, I, yeah. so I, think, you know, I think this is going to have a huge impact to how some of the big companies deal with these allotments because everyone's raising their hand, pick me. Yeah. I mean, Jensen basically gets begged every time he's on stage. You can see people sucking up to him um, uh, because they're partnering, but also they want their GPU. So you clearly, the, whoever gets the content piece, of the, I mean, it's not the content, but the allotments, they're going to be better and faster. So there's a long line to get these. And now AMD's not sitting on the sidelines. Yeah. Qualcomm's not sitting on the sidelines. So we're seeing a massive surge of new stuff coming in. And the timing for, for this system is interesting. So I'm curious for you, the journey and how long you've been at this because you guys specialize in this. This is like what you do. You don't do anything else, do you? Explain, no, the, this is explain the journey of, uh, of this company, where, how it got here, because right now you're in a sweet spot because now one, especially with the data, I mean, you can apply great models and AI to this too. So it's like you can actually get the well-oiled machine going on the distribution of of the allotment. Yep. So we've been, we started off with actually a couple of customers, you know, NetApp was one of our early ones, SanDisk was an early one, gone in the, you know, back in the day. Yeah. I mean, uh, NVIDIA was doing gaming and it was a small company at the time. Uh, and, you know, some opti, the word some opti is uh, an optimal sum. So we, we always wanted to do, and we've always been in this, what we refer to as combinatorial optimization. We didn't have AI going on 15 yeah. years ago when we started, but we started, you know. There was predictive uh, analytics, you had machine yeah. learning, some cool yeah. stuff. Yeah, and then we picked that along, that, that was our second wave, you know, about seven to 10 years ago. But what I want to say is, so, and combinatorial optimization is not something we invented. It's been around for like, since Herbert Simon days, the Nobel <laughs> laureate from Carnegie Mellon. You know, this yeah. has been going on for a long time. Yeah. You know, where he used the word satisfying. But these class of problems, technically, are referred to as NP hard problems. You know, there is not a perfect solution for it. The problem has not been so much technology, John. The problem is uh, matching the technology to solve a real business problem. Yeah. So it's more of a business and how the business processes are set up. And we've been kind of going through this in the past decade. Yeah. But this problem that now you're talking about on the show has really taken it like multiple yeah. fold where you need yeah. where you need the technology, you otherwise the, the billions are involved. You need the technology one. The money's clearly on the table, no doubt about it, but you brought up a couple of things, that satisfaction and profit maximization variables, and then also like the top down, bottoms up, because you have sales teams out there, you know, pushing it, and then they're getting orders. Top down management has to manage the strategic relationships. Yeah. So the power dynamics yeah. have to be balanced. Yeah. So if you have any kind of like, you know, breaking the force, to use a Star Wars example. Yeah. You can't screw this up. This is one of these things that's submission critical. Yeah, I, I, very well said, very well said. And you're coming at it from your standpoint and actually it's, it's music to my ear because it's what I hear at, at the place we are working at. They call it, uh, you know, the, the top management is coming at it from this standpoint, yeah. the sales guys are coming at it from this point, the customers want escalation from this point. So this cross-functionality Everybody knows it needs to be done. Yeah. Question is, 
it's not a question of what needs to be done, but yeah. how can it be done? So yeah. you know, when you, when you talk about this platform, yeah. what we are really enabling is, we are giving them with these better and faster models, just more scenarios, yeah. more choices. Yeah. So let's say- Great, for, nego great yeah. for negotiations. Exactly. I mean, you're going to negotiate contracts like, what do we got in the allotment? Well, not much, okay. Yeah, then, you know. correct. They are just seeing more scenarios. The customer guy can run it, the demand planner can run it, then they can get into a conference room and adjust these tolerances. And maybe what one department comes up with might not be optimal, mm -hmm. Maybe only 70% optimal, but that's good enough for the customer side. So it's a matter of just a little give and take. You know, Jay, as SiliconANGLE and the Cube and the Cube Research, look at the market. I mentioned the fab companies, we mentioned them, Samsung, OnSemi. You got the Fabless, obviously the big three, NVIDIA, AMD, and Qualcomm, and the enterprise is booming. So we're going to be at CES and Mobile World Congress next year. We've got supercomputing coming up, which is going to basically now a high performance computing show, all the players are going to be there. I mean, I saw an NVIDIA recruiting four years ago. I'm like, I called Dave Vellante and said, we should, we got to be at this show because it's going to be an AI show. No, it's an HPC show. Well, not really. This is going down main street of, of, of technology and it is now. So you see the difference between the companies that get the better technology are putting more into the bottom line because they're making more money because they're keeping their customers. The, the need for speed is so great right now that if you, if you screw the, the planning side, yep. you could be on the wrong side of history. Yep. You either miss the wave or you're too much out front and you become driftwood. Yep. So, you know, this is, this is uh, that was that Pat Gelsinger's line. He quoted that on theCUBE many, many years ago. If you're too out front, you driftwood. If you're too late, you miss the wave. So the timing to have this well-oiled machine on the business side, top down and bottom up, is mission critical. It's now. It's now, I mean, no. it's girl, I mean, yeah. and, and this is what I think the Wall Street Journal, not Wall Street Journal, Wall Street financial analysts kind of squint through is like, okay, earnings came out, what's Broadcom going to do, NVIDIA. So, you know, and if, you, if you're a relationship manager, they now have partnerships with everybody. Yeah. So they have to be a good partner and deliver the goods. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the financial, absolutely, John, and just when you're talking about the timing being too early or too late or whatever it is, ultimately, we are not talking a few million dollars here. You know, we're not talking about a modeling app or a productivity app that, you know, lets you do 60 minutes of work in yeah. six minutes. Not we're not talking about It's not that. Candy Crush or Semiconductors. Yeah. I'm saying, we, if, you, if you look at the money, go ahead. No, no, no continue. I would say the absolute, it's the detailed and comprehensive nature of it. Yeah, the, uh, the monies we're talking about, and I'm, I, I want to say this, you, you mentioned Wall Street analysts. We are talking at least $15 million in margin increase annually. And I'm being very conservative. We're, we're going to push that 15 million up to two digit in millions, or it could be hundreds of millions, in gross margin increase. Margin, yeah. Okay, I, I just want to yeah, say my word. And again, I'm not spinning. Margin, not revenue. No, no, margin. margin. And I'm not spinning this. I I'm actually want to share with you that this is conservative, and it is based on firsthand experience. All right, now. What does that mean? We are really moving the needle in terms of margin growth. I mean, even 1%, 2%. I mean, nobody believes these numbers, but we it's actually- It's a volume have, game. One little increase can throw off tons of cash. Yeah, margin. absolutely. And you know, a few basis points, a few basis points, I repeat, gets attention from every CFO yeah. and every semiconductor Wall Street analyst. Yeah. And here, we're obviously talking a yeah. lot more than that, a lot more. So you have a lot of secrets. Um, sure, if I'm, if I'm a Broadcom or I'm an NVIDIA, I don't want to let the word get out, let those financial analysts kind of connect the dots because I want to make sure I'm managing the earnings relationship. So, well, that's good for them. I mean, good for you. I, well, final question I want to just kind of end on is, obviously you're well positioned in an area that's going to be super important and is important. What's next? What's the pitch? So what's next for you? And then what's the pitch to people watching who might be uh, decision makers of the big companies who are dealing with uh, all these uh, components? So I think time is of the essence. And I would say to the prospectives ones that you talked about, and I'm not going to go into confidentiality, number one is you want to get a tried and tested system immediately to pilot out whatever data you have so you can save some uh, billions of dollars I'm talking about, maybe millions of dollars. And I'm referring to two specific areas. I'm talking about optimization and predictive analytics. And these two areas are technically nearly solved 
for the semiconductor high tech domain. Uh, today, Samopti provides planners with close to the best possible output. And you know, you try out a pilot, yeah. try out a pilot, make your decision, but the time is now. The other area, looking ahead in future, I call it the touchless planning. Another word for that, and a better word that you probably know is autonomous. Yeah. And autonomous is not there. So let's not spend too much. I yeah. mean, we're going to At best, it's semi-autonomous, at best. At, okay, yeah, I would at say. At best, even yeah. if it, the dots connect. I would say, I mean, we've been at it for a while. Uh, I would say maybe 20%, we are 20% into it. So yeah. I don't want to <laughs> set expectations of your executives wrong in here. I would say nothing's going to happen in the year from now, maybe year two onwards. But again, touchless planning or autonomous, we are not automating decision making through models for semiconductor plan. We are not doing that. Absolutely, all we are doing is we are observing planner behavior, observing your company's process and the behavior of how the processes work, and detecting the usage patterns. That's all we are doing. So we are not solving necessarily a revenue margin problem there. We oh, might detect- you're servicing, that you're, you're servicing insights. Correct. Through, through the observational data, yeah. the space is their data and their workflows. Yeah. And you say, okay, give this person that based on this. Yeah. So again, back to the multivariate. Correct, right. exception handling and things like that. All right, well, yeah. well, well Jay, it's great to have you here. Um, uh, give a quick plug for the company. What are you guys looking to do? What's next on your agenda? Um, thanks for sharing your data on this kind of area. It's super important, but put a plug in. Well, uh, maybe we do another call and I think we have a lot to talk about when it comes to forecasting. Today what we talked about is allotment. Yeah. And there has been some groundbreaking work where we think like handwriting recognition, we, we have it, we have it now. Yeah. And so maybe that's the next one. Yeah, and then certainly got the data, get the agents. Thanks for coming on. I'm John Furrier here in the Cube Studios in Palo Alto, California, uh, where we're breaking down all the action. The semiconductor area is complex, multi-variables. Everybody wants to get their hands on the units, the chips, integrating the process. And again, a lot of enterprise action as well not just the big semiconductor chip companies, you're starting to see the consumer goods will be at CES, will be at Mobile World Congress. This is an important area because what they say they're going to do and what they actually do depends on if they get what they need from the suppliers. And that's going to be a huge part of this overall ecosystem. Again, we're a connected ecosystem and we'll be continuing to report it. Thanks for watching.